A new voter survey by Emerson College has Mayor Wall significantly ahead of his best-known challenger, City Councilor Tito Jackson. To tell us about the poll and what it could mean beyond next Tuesday's preliminary election is an assistant professor in Emerson's Department of Communication Studies and an advisor to the college's polling society, Spencer Kimball. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Spencer. Thank you, Chris. First of all, talk about uh, the people that you, you polled and how, who were they, how many? So we took a look at the city of Boston and we pulled landlines of registered voters. So one, you had to be a registered voter to be included in the survey, and then you also had to have a landline to be included. And we know that there's limitations with cell phone only households. And so we waited to make sure that particularly that 18 to 34 year old age group was represented in the sample. Well, uh, I, I know there was some uh, tricky things going on with landlines because in the last presidential election, I think that was flagged as, as maybe a, a source of inaccuracy. So I guess, did you worry about that in this? Well, we took a look at the 2016 race for a long time after the election, and we came up with a couple of uh, changes to our analysis. And one of them was to make sure that that younger age demographic was properly represented. We think that primarily in the Democratic primary, that group was not, and so we kind of fixed that moving forward. Chris, another thing I'm sure you thought about this too, is that when you poll likely voters, uh, just that term itself sounds like a tilt toward an incumbent, especially in this town. So how, how do you offset that? So we ask them what their likelihood of them voting, or in Boston, we have the early voting going on, so we can find out if they've already voted. But then we match it up actually with their voter profile. So we find out, they say, hey, I'm a likely voter, but then we can look back and see if they voted in the last election, two out of the last three elections. And we find that that voting history really gives you a better understanding of who's going to come out and vote on Tuesday. Well, of course, I guess the, the most interesting figure is what's the spread between uh, Marty Walsh and, and Tito Jackson? Sure. So we took a look at the primary, and in that spread was 31 points, which is well outside the polls, about 4.2 margin of error. Um, T, uh, the mayor is up about 51, 52 percent, which is right over that threshold that you want, obviously, to win the majority. And Tito, unfortunately, is down, for, unfortunately for Tito, he's down in the low 20s. So he's got a lot of room to make up. And then you've got a couple of third party candidates in there kind of mopping up the last 10, 12 points. Um, with about 20 percent undecided. Interesting, the spread uh, between Walsh and Jackson in, in the black community. Yeah, that, I was very surprised by that, I, especially in his home district, you know, District 7, and you're over in Mattapan, and you're in Roxbury. Um, but Walsh has really made inroads there, and he did fairly well in the primary uh, last cycle over at, right outside of the Dorchester area. Um, even Charlotte Golder Ritchie, who was a really strong candidate in 2013, she was uh, competing with Walsh in some of those communities that are more typically African-American. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Professor Spencer Kimball from Emerson College. Um, another thing to look for in this poll, which I'm sure you, you were counting, is how many people know these candidates. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the third and the fourth candidates, maybe not too many people know them. Yes. But, but between Walsh and, and Jackson, what's the difference? Well, Walsh has about a 90% name recognition. So 90% of voters know who the mayor is. And out of that 90, 70% like him. So only about 20% dislike him, which is just phenomenal numbers for an incumbent. Um, it's about a plus 50 on favorability. Now, Tito would be a, considered a strong challenger. He's got a 43% name recognition. I mean, 43 positive name recognition, 33% negative. Overall, it's like 76%, which is what you want in a challenger. The problem is he's going against somebody at a 72% favorable rating, and that's really causing a trouble for Jackson to try to pick up some steam and momentum in the race. Well, um, first question about Ch uh, Jackson is that if he wants to catch up, what's the best thing for him to do, maybe? Well, he's got a problem financially. Uh, if you take a look at his war chest, he doesn't really have the resources to be able to go and do the television ads, do the direct mail pieces. So it's got to be a really grassroots effort. What I've seen from the Jackson camp is really grassroots from 18 to 25 year olds, um, really hammering the uh, issue of affordable housing and development in the city. Um, one topic that might come to, uh, to a boil is the issue of safety. We have seen a slight movement, particularly with the shooting on the Boston Common last week, that people are feeling a little less safe than they did a year ago. And uh, obviously nobody's rooting for it, but if that was to you know, expand, um, that might be an area that he could 
get some momentum with. Well, what would Walsh have to be the most cautious about, you think? Well, I think what Walsh is trying to do is just run out the clock. And I know there's a lot of chatter going on. I can't believe he's not debating in the primary. Is he going to debate in the general? And really, he has nothing to gain in this debate. He's up by 25, 30 points. I think what you'll see is late in the general election, he'll probably debate. But at this point, he just doesn't want any self-inflicted wounds, doesn't want to say anything that would cause anybody to vote against him or to now favor uh, Jackson. So he's being very cautious in what he says and what he does, and I think that's going to help him as long as there's not a major uh, flare-up in the next seven weeks. Interesting thing about his favorability, I mean, is, is it the, the kind of public presence that, that he has developed, almost like a brand, or is it just the contact, you know, almost the routine contact in, in constituent services with people around the city? Well, in previous polls, he doesn't have the type of contact that for his you know, predecessor, Mayor Menino, Menino had. Right, you right. Know, I mean, everybody had shaken the mayor's hand. Not, it's not the case with um, Marty Walsh. But what he does have is a strong economy. People are thinking that they're doing a little bit better today than they did last year, or the same. And that's really, you know, pocketbook issues drive people's votes. And they're saying, well, things seem to be okay. Maybe we'll maintain it. Now, there is about a third of folks who don't feel that way. And that's the group that Jackson will go after. But it's just not that discontent with the status quo that Jackson needs to really make the case for change. By the way, you, uh, one of the things in the poll says that uh, Jackson does have an edge among younger voters. How, how much of an edge is that and how much do you think that translates into votes for him? Well, anytime we look at subsets, it always increases the margin of error. So we look at those very cautiously. Um, but we did see, while he was losing with the African-American vote, he was winning with that 18 to 34-year-old vote. The difficulty with that group is do they actually vote? Um, a lot of them have enthusiasm for the candidate, but you know, what I saw in the 2016 election, that enthusiasm didn't actually translate to going to the polls and voting for the person that they wanted to. So it's a bit of a wild card going with that uh, age, but with that said, he has lots of inroads he has to make with the upper age uh, demographics, so better to have a base somewhere to build off of. Well, we should mention, if you've got any polls in the future, people can go to, uh, I guess, Emerson College has a website for this? We do. It's the Emerson College Polling Society, emersoncollegepollingsociety.com, and uh, we can find more information. We'll be doing a poll in Alabama this week for their primary. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Chris. Spencer Kimball from Emerson College.